While they debated her role, practical problems arose. The Ice Maiden's freezer was faulty. Fungi started growing on her body and the tattoos were fading. It meant another journey. The deteriorating body was brought to Moscow. It is in Moscow that scientists have developed ways of preserving dead bodies, usually those of famous communists. Now, similar techniques have been applied to the Ice Maiden. The Russian approach is to soak the body in a cocktail of chemicals to permanently fix it. It can then be displayed in a museum. The decomposition had been stopped and the tattoos saved. Tattoos which would reveal more about her place in Pazaric society. Natalia believes the Ice Maiden had a mystical role and that evidence for this could come from studying the mysterious symbolism of the tattoos. I come to the Altai to work here, particularly in the Chiyasta. I'm very interested in the archaeology and the art history, really, the art of the people of the Bronze Age and of Pazaric culture. And this is really one of the richest areas in all of Central Asia. Their art is found not only in the tombs, but also in rock carvings scattered throughout the Altai. The Ice Maiden's discovery is very important. We find in it beautiful objects, the finest quality, quality that will help us understand the technologies of those periods, ideas of trade, um, and most importantly for me perhaps is the way in which the people of the Pazaric period, the Ice Maiden in particular, used the natural materials around her to give an artistic expression to her life. As far as we know, they had no writing. But they did use imagery far more extensively than most people who came after them. The animal imagery are not simply pictures. They actually tell stories, stories that perhaps everybody knew by heart, and these become written out again. A little bit like the storytelling, for example, on European cathedrals. The main carved images are deer, male and female, there are some goats, and uh, some felines or wolves, that is predators and prey. The antlers you can see here, they're very long and elegant, like waves, uh, with these great curls over here. What we have here is a desire to exaggerate what was apparently a very important part of the animal. The deer is closely related, was closely related in the beliefs of the Pazariks. If you remember the beautiful deer on the back of the mirror from the Ice Maiden's burial, that deer also had these wonderful wave-like antlers. So it's a very distinctive aspect of the Pazaric art. The deer was the most common image. The Pazaric were obsessed by them. In other tombs, imitation antlers have been found that were used to decorate the horses, to transmogrify them into deer. Perhaps the tattoos on the bodies of the Pazaric acted to transform them as well. Painted people became mystical animals. The Ice Maiden herself has finally been returned to Siberia from Moscow. For the first time, Esther Jacobson will be able to study the tattoos of the Ice Maiden for herself. <laughs> Они великолепны просто. 
красота. Очень Просто красиво. хорошая сохранность очень. Да. Вот. вот. Дальше идет прекрасная головка оленя. Они в одном образе слили все, что они так хотели бы видеть и иметь. Самые любимые черты. Это значит конь, олень и козерог. И красивый. И, да, да, и да. что очень интересно, еще есть татуировка на большом пальце. Вот здесь. И это как? Что очень как? Это был один из самых хороших способ искусства. По крайней мере, человек... очень совершенный, правда? Да, здесь да. мы видим просто совершенство. То есть это делалось а, наколами с каким-то красителем. И это было да. сделано в молодости. Я думаю, это все делалось в молодости. Tattooing would have been an important initiation rite. The dye was soot, and its depth in the skin indicate they used bone needles. The fantastic creatures were myths passed down the generations. It's quite moving to see the tattoos for the first time, and to see them with Natalia here. Uh, it's moving because they really are very beautiful tattoos, and they bring the woman very much to life as something, as a person who was decorated very beautifully with extraordinary art artistry, as Natalia has said. On the other hand, it's difficult for me to see them too, um, because she was meant to be left in peace, and uh, so I have to somehow come to terms with that. <laughs> Я думаю, что эта молодая женщина, похороненная с такими почестями, и чье тело покрыто татуировкой, она не была обычной рядовым членом общества. И, вероятно, ее особенность заключалась в том, что она обладала каким-то особым даром, который ценился в данном обществе. Вполне может быть, что эта женщина могла быть просто сказительницей, то есть рассказчицей, которая хранила в памяти историю и мифы своего народа. Это было очень важно для позарыгцев, как и для всех обществ, в которых не существовало письменности. The bards and storytellers who recite the Altai epics have a long history in the region. Just as with the Pazarik, they hold an important position in Altai society. So, if the Ice Maiden had been a storyteller, she would have played a key role in her society, a solitary and impressive young woman, all those centuries ago. still remained, her racial origin. In a Moscow basement, a researcher is rebuilding the face of the Ice Maiden. Tanya Baluyeva uses the skull as the basis for her reconstruction. The shape of the eye sockets and flatness of face help determine her racial type. From the study of living people, it's even possible to estimate the thickness of the skin for the Ice Maiden's reconstruction. что это яркий представитель европеоидной расы. И никаких, в общем-то, монголоидных черт эта дама не носила. 